Welcome to the Code Review. I'm Dion Almer, and for once I'm not in a cube or an office at Google talking to you. I'm actually in a beautiful location in Colorado. I'm in a little town called Eldora, which is directly west from Boulder, Colorado, which in turn is close to Denver. We're actually 9,000 feet up here, so if I lose my breath, uh, I apologize, but I hope you'll bear with me. A couple of interesting things have happened in the in the world of developers in the last couple of couple of weeks. Uh, one thing that some of us at Google have been a part of is this new Open Web Foundation, and this foundation kind of came about as a lot of us in the community, Googlers, but people from all over the place, uh, have found frustrations creating their own little foundations uh, to match their needs for their products. So there's things out there like OpenID and OAuth and uh, various things like that, Dojo, JavaScript side, where they had to build a foundation to kind of deal with the IP issues and such uh, that made sense to them. And this actually takes time, a lot of effort, and uh, it could be quite painful. So we thought, along with these other people in the community, is it time to have a foundation that focuses on the open web and tries to kind of come together and deal with some of the issues that we find uh, with respect to IP and uh, IPR in the open web. So that's where the Open Web Foundation came about. It got announced at OzCon, um, not making a huge deal about it yet because quite frankly, until we've actually got some things that go through this incubation process, and incubation is similar to uh, the Apache process, then there's not that much to talk about. But if you're interested in this kind of stuff, we want you to join. We want it to be a very open, inclusive uh, area. Individuals join, companies don't join. And uh, so if you want to be a part of it, go to uh, openweb.org. Related to the open web, one uh, bit of news I found particularly cool was this uh, nice chap, Vladimir, uh, someone who works uh, on Mozilla on Firefox and actually did a lot of work on the Canvas API, which in Firefox is actually uh, very, very good. It supports now, in the latest head versions, everything in the uh, Canvas spec. And I should backtrack a little bit. Canvas, of course, is uh, an HTML5 element pioneered by Apple uh, back in the day that allows you to do uh, mostly known for 2D drawing. You could actually have different contexts, but to draw things in a manner uh, in 2D, OpenGL kind of like, uh, where you can just kind of paint things directly to the screen. So it's very cool. Now this nice chap Vlad from Mozilla, he went around and he actually implemented this in a really interesting way. He's got it in Firefox, he took a lot of that code and he built it as an object extension for Internet Explorer. So in theory we can take this and now use Canvas within IE. And this is really exciting. Um, it's exciting because there are actually another couple of ways of doing it. There was a library that some Googlers actually came up with called XCanvas that was a wrapper that mapped the Canvas API to a VML API. VML is, is native within IE. Uh, then we've also been doing work on mapping it to Silverlight. So there's going to be you know, X Canvas that has a Silverlight bridge as well. But this native version working in an object will hopefully give us uh, a lot greater um, implementation speed. And then we can maybe get the Canvas API across all of these great browsers. Back to the uh, Open Web Foundation a little bit um, and tying over to Google Code, you may have noticed uh, not too long ago we announced new support on the project hosting side of things where when you tag your projects with an open source license like Apache etc, you'll see there's now content licenses that you can choose from. So you can tag the content in your project under Creative Commons. And so we found this really important as we go through and build out these different uh, pieces of code. We've got open source libraries, but what about the documentation? Where does that fall? Uh, protocols, specs, things like that. Now we can go through and you can tag uh, Creative Commons type licensing to kind of really be explicit about what you're doing and making it a, a very open scenario. Google Code has been doing a lot of other actually interesting things, nice releases recently. Uh, we talked about a source code review product. It's uh, kind of apropos to talk about on the code review. Um, Guido built a system called Mondrian at Google that allows us to track uh, our code reviews. 
and it's kind of really built into the software process here at Google that everything you write gets reviewed and, and people do a look looks good to me kind of thing to, to get it through the system and he built something on top of the email based system that we had as a web based product using Django. He then cr created an open source version that worked on in a similar way but it worked on subversion and, and other things as well. The Mondrian version uh, acts on perforce. We just tied that together with project hosting. So now for your project, your open source projects that you host on Google Code, you will be able to kind of opt in and use the same code review tools uh, that we're used to at Google. So uh, we think that's uh, pretty exciting too. We also opened up a slew of feeds. This is one of the most popular uh, things that we've had in our issue tracker. A popular request is to get feeds of a lot of the data that's in Google Code. So we've had some things, but now we've added to that and you can get track on the project hosting side of all the issues that are coming in, kind of anything that's happening with your open source project, you can now subscribe to that data and get it sent directly uh, to your feed, which we think is cool. Code search just uh, added a few new bits of functionality. Uh, you know, in the past you could go through search for some code, it'll uh, give you code that it finds out there. Uh, now it'll do really smart things with that and you find something in a particular file, it'll show you a left hand, left hand outliner that's going to give you details of all of the methods, how the things interact within that file. So we think that uh, code search is uh, coming along and getting more and more relevant uh, for developers as well. A product that uh, I've been involved in, the uh, Ajax Libraries API, that's the API that allows you to just use hosted JavaScript over on Google of the popular uh, open source frameworks uh, like Prototype, Dojo, etc. One of the number one requests, in fact, also I think was the number one request, was people that were using this on SSL uh, were unable to use it because all of this was getting served from HTTP. So we enabled SSL now. So if you're building an application that also wants to use the shared library uh, but needs to be encrypted, uh, and you often also want to do that obviously because you don't want the browser to say some of this is encrypted and some of it isn't. Uh, you can now use HTTPS to get access to uh, the various Ajax libraries and soon we're going to be announcing uh, a bunch more updates to the libraries and new libraries that we're pretty excited about too. Staying with the website, uh, we just came out and talked about something called GXP, uh, Google XML Pages, which is our declarative markup of uh, doing views in various products at Google. So a lot of people in Java, for example, know JSP, people know ASP, PHP. GXP is this XML-based view that you can use and we've open sourced it and it's available and there's a talk that was given at OzCon that kind of went into detail on pros and cons, how it works. So you can go and listen to uh, one of the founders of GXP uh, talk about what's there and what's available to you. Google Health recently launched and uh, someone on that team actually just wrote something about how we use GWT on that product and they again discuss kind of why they chose GWT, what it's doing for them and things like that. So if you're interested in GWT, that's something to look out for. Um, I also kind of re recently refound uh, a really good article written by Bruce Johnson about JSNI and allowing you to tie JavaScript native to the Java code, Java source code that you're writing with GWT. So that's something uh, to check out in GWT land as well. Some random kind of cool things that I've seen going on over at Google. Uh, we just announced CalDev support for the uh, Google Calendar API. So Calendar actually was one of the first, if not the first product to uh, come out with these Google Data APIs. And now with CalDev, the standard that kind of builds on uh, WebDAV, you can go through and just do read-write access through the standard protocol. Uh, the thing that they're testing on primarily to start with is iCal. So being able to, <coughs> so being able to take your iCal and automatically sync it with Google Calendar. So give that a try. It's kind of in uh, developer preview for you to play with. So, so be careful and all the usual things uh, kind of apply there, but definitely something to be excited about how we can all start using this CalDev standard uh, to synchronize between the various calendar and systems that, that you may or may not have. QR codes, they're those little square codes that you'll see uh, kind of pioneered, I think in Asia, that are kind of like barcodes that mobile phones can just go up to and read 
and so you can have like a business card, a URL, phone can go to it, it can open up the, the browser. We've added support for these QR codes directly in the spreadsheet API. So you can now have spreadsheets that have QR codes uh, automatically generated, which is kind of a, uh, a fun, nice feature. And then to finish off Google Developer Day, I was there part of uh, Latin America and uh, we did Asia Pacific. Next is Europe. So starting in September, we're going to go in through, starting with London, Madrid, Paris, etc. And then moving across Germany, Prague. And so if you're in any of those towns, uh, I'd really love to, to see you there. We're going to be talking about all of the Google technology, obviously, but also a lot of general open web uh, focus. I'll probably be speaking there about state of Ajax, what's going on in the web at, at that particular time. And uh, we just love getting the community together to talk about the cool stuff that we're building on the web. So again, thanks so much for listening to the code review. Hopefully see you soon.